The report began, it is one thing to arouse and hold the attention of the viewing public by programs which are openly and avowedly pure fiction. And should be... Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Am I being debated? Am I being debated? Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Is this for real? Are we being for real right now? Henry Kissinger dies at age 100. Oh my God. Anne, Baba! Henry Kissinger is dead. Possibly a vaccine injury, many people are saying. That's crazy. He's dead. Everyone has written an obituary. Like, there are so many people that have most likely... Like, look look how fast they f***ing dropped this on the Washington Post. This has been a moment that everyone was waiting... So many people were waiting for. Kind of a tasteless reaction to, towards a man who did so much stuff in his time. Bro, this is like... Like, you know how America celebrated when Osama bin Laden was Merc. This dude is Osama bin Laden to the third world times one million. There's no comparison. I mean, this is the this is the true villain. Like, if there's a singular force of evil that you can you can point to. Wow, I'm I'm in a little bit of shock. Oh my god, I, I'm not. I I don't know what to say. What a glorious, joyous moment. What a joy of. I mean, what a, what a joyous moment, but also at the same time, it's like, you know, he, he got to f live to 100. Let's take a look at what Henry Kissinger was doing right before he died, guys. Let's, let's take a look at what he was doing right before he died. Oh, Henry Kissinger on Hamas attacks fallout. Germany let in too many foreigners. As a minority in Berlin cheers Hamas attacks on Israel, former top U.S. diplomat says immigration was a grave mistake. Guy was talking about grave mistakes. Mother was worried about the, the wrong grave. <laughs> oh, that's funny. These are moments where I where I assume, uh, where I hope that you know hell is real, so that he goes. Here's Anthony Bourdain's uh, opinion on on Henry Kissinger. Once you've been to Cambodia, you'll never stop wanting to beat Henry Kissinger to death with your bare hands. People like this, unfortunately, they just get away with it. They stay alive for 100 years. Shout out to you when you went to his 100th birthday. Hassan Piker and Austin Show attends war criminal Henry Kissinger's 100th birthday party. Rap TV. Here, let's watch the Mehdi Hassan video on, <laughs> like, literally. Kiss Let me tell you something. This is going to be the lightest version of his uh, most grave crimes against humanity. Barack Obama's administration honored Kissinger with a special award. Hillary Clinton called him her friend and said she relied on his counsel. Samantha Power, the self-styled champion of humanitarian interventions, went to a baseball uh -huh. game with Kissinger. And Joe Biden, when he was a senator, toasted Kissinger. Although, to be fair, he hasn't yet invited him to the White House like all of his predecessors have done. But look, here's what I want to do to mark Kissinger's 100th birthday. I want to talk about some of the many, many people around the world who didn't get to live till 100 or even 60, 70 or 80 because of Henry Kissinger, because of his support for brutal dictators, brutal regimes, brutal wars and war crimes. Let's start where else in Southeast Asia, the war in Vietnam, which Kissinger may have ridiculously won a Nobel Peace Prize for ending, but which he prolonged and escalated in the first place, including a secret and illegal expansion of that bloody war to Laos and Cambodia. It was him. Thanks to a report released by the Department of Defense in 1973, we know that the National Security Council, headed by Henry A. Kissinger, approved each of the 3,875 Cambodia bombing raids in 1969 and 1970, as well as the methods for keeping them out of the newspapers. To quote Kissinger himself while instructing an all-out air assault on Cambodia, anything that flies on anything that moves. As Human Rights Watch noted in 2001, United States and South Vietnamese aerial bombings on Kissinger's watch left approximately 350,000 Laotian civilians and 600,000 Cambodian civilians dead. And just this past week, The Intercept reported on the basis of U.S. military documents and eyewitness accounts from Cambodian survivors 
that Kissinger is responsible for more civilian deaths in Cambodia than was previously known. And yet, Kissinger has never apologized for what he did to Laos or Cambodia, instead defending those bombing campaigns as legitimate attacks on North Vietnam. I failed to see the moral issue. The Vietnamese forces and saying he failed to see any moral issue with them. Still, as the late great Anthony Bourdain once wrote, witness what Henry did in Cambodia, the fruits of his genius for statesmanship, and you will never understand why he's not sitting in the dock at The Hague next to Milosevic. Then there's Argentina. In 1976, a coup d'etat overthrew the elected president and replaced Eva Perón with a military junta. That junta then launched what's been called the Dirty War, the hunting down of political dissidents, of socialists, trade unionists, students. And they launched it with the approval, encouragement even, of Henry Kissinger. We know this thanks to declassified documents, which The New Yorker reported on. Oh, God, I'm going to do such a fat America bad propaganda power hour tomorrow. It's not even funny. So many motherfuckers that always say, Hassan, all you say is America bad are finally going to come to terms with why America bad. Incredible stuff. There are very few singular individuals that you can point at when describing American foreign policy being just insurmountable evil. Because it's oftentimes simply a, a collection of individuals acting out on their capital self-interest. No, tomorrow's not the IRL stream. It's next week. I was wrong. Writing, two days after the coup, Kissinger was briefed by his assistant secretary of state, who warned him, I think also we've got to expect a fair amount of repression, probably a good deal of blood in Argentina before too long. Kissinger replied, whatever chance they have, they will need a little encouragement because I do want to encourage them. In a meeting with the Argentine foreign minister two months later, Kissinger advised him, in the words of the New Yorker, winkingly, quote, we are aware you are in a difficult period. We must understand. We understand you must establish authority. If there are things that have to be done, you should do them quickly. Somewhere between 20 and 30,000 people are believed to have been arrested, tortured and killed in Argentina's dirty war. As The Guardian notes, many bodies have never been found. No birthday parties for them. Then there is East Timor, which was invaded by Indonesia in December 1975, an invasion that led to the death of at least 100,000 people over the next two decades plus of Indonesian occupation, according to a UN-backed Truth Commission. On the eve of that invasion, literally the day before, Kissinger alongside President... There is so much more. Like, this is just not even a highlight. This doesn't even scratch the motherfucking surface, dude. I, I can't even begin to explain this to you, okay? Yo, who's worse, Bin Laden or America statistically victim-wise? Wait, what? Bin Laden or America victim-wise? What, what do you mean? America killed one million Iraqis. Like, what? America sneezes and on accident kills, like, 3,000 civilians. America's the greatest terrorist on the planet. There's nothing that comes close to the number of, of civilian, civilian deaths. With Indonesian dictator General Suharto. Yeah. Bin Laden is the coughing baby if America is the, the hydrogen bomb. <laughs> Then there's East Pakistan, now Bangladesh, which was attacked by a military-ruled West Pakistan, now just Pakistan, in 1971, a conflict that killed hundreds of thousands of Bengalis and displaced millions. And yet, as Princeton professor Gary Bass has shown, based on declassified documents and White House tapes, Kissinger stood stoutly behind Pakistan's generals, supporting the murderous regime at many of the most crucial moments. And when a U.S. diplomat on the ground in what was then East Pakistan sent a cable to Washington warning of a genocide, Kissinger called the man a maniac and had him dismissed from his post. I could go on and on and on, sadly. I didn't even get to Chile and Kissinger's support for General Pinochet's coup there or his betrayal of Iraq's Kurds. Kissinger, of course, has for years denied any criminal culpability for any of this. As historian Greg Grandin of Yale has argued, a full tally hasn't been done, but a back-of-the-envelope count would attribute three, maybe four million deaths to Kissinger's actions. Easy. So where is the accountability? The reckoning? Where is justice, dare I ask? In his 2001 book, The Trial of Henry Kissinger, the late Christopher Hitchens called for Kissinger to be prosecuted for war crimes, for crimes against humanity, and for offences against common or customary or international law, including conspiracy to commit murder, kidnap, and torture. And yet Kissinger this week celebrates his landmark 100th birthday with not an arrest warrant or war crimes tribunal in sight. Henry Kissinger being a free man for his entire life 
after the many war crimes that he was the direct architect of, truly shows America's hegemonic power status. It goes to show you that the International Criminal Court, the Hague, International Humanitarian Law, all of these organs that are supposed to uphold the liberal rule-based international order are simply there for aesthetic purposes or, in many instances, to give the go-ahead to the United States of America to go and bludgeon our foreign adversaries. Was this popular opinion to say against Kissinger years ago? Yes. 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 Henry Kissinger has been a uh, notoriously evil figure that many people consider to be objectively evil for so long. It's not even a a controversy is a cliche to say rest and piss henry kissinger is unironically a cliche i mean the funny situation is that like a lot of liberals that you will be hearing from tomorrow that celebrate henry kissinger's death people that adorn the aesthetics of radical politics will be doing it without even considering the irony of their endless defense for american misconduct american imperialism in the ongoing conflicts don't forget that yeah, I mean, I, I showed the Anthony Bourdain quote from his book. Once you've been to Cambodia, you'll never stop wanting to beat Henry Kissinger to death with your bare hands. You will never again be able to open a newspaper and read about what that treacherous, prevaricating, murderous scumbag sitting down for a nice chat with Charlie Rose or attending some black tie affair for a new glossy magazine without choking. Witness what Henry did in Cambodia, the fruits of his genius for statesmanship, and you will never understand why he's not sitting in the dock at The Hague next to Milosevic. While Henry continues to nibble nori rolls and ramaki at A-list parties, Cambodia, the neutral nation he's secretly and illegally bombed, invaded, undermined, and then threw the dogs, is still trying to raise itself up on its one remaining leg. Henry Kissinger was an honored guest in China. And for the Chinese, Kissinger was a symbol of a relationship uh, with the United States that frankly doesn't really exist anymore. Kissinger was also extremely controversial because he and Nixon mm -hmm. had undertaken extremely controversial policies. The Christmas bombing, and at the overturning of the Allende government in Chile. Huh. Yeah. And you know what I'm thinking? Dude, if the CNN, if CNN is saying he's controversial, you know his ass is the worst monster. His enormous foreign policy uh, vision and big brain uh, shaped the, the, the later decades of the Cold War in a way uh, that we are still dealing with the legacy of it. The Middle East, uh, you know, he... he basically created the notion of shuttle diplomacy and the peace process. The Beltway Butcher, war criminal Kissinger, dead at 100. I wonder if Henry Kissinger's death will cause people to just, like, take a cold, hard look at our policy, like our foreign affairs, everything that we've done, especially because it's been so long. I don't know. I, I, I feel like, holy f Spencer Ackerman is another one of those people that 100% friend of the show, Spencer Ackerman. Definitely had an obituary, ready to go. Henry Kissinger died on Wednesday at his home in Connecticut. His consulting firm said in a statement, the Tories war criminal was 100. Measuring purely by confirmed kills, worst mass murderer ever ex uh, executed by the United States was white supremacist terrorist Timothy McVeigh. On April 19, 1995, McVeigh detonated a massive bomb at the Murrah Federal Building, killing 168 people, including 19 children. The government killed McVeigh by lethal injection on June 2001. Whatever hesitation a state execution provokes, even over a man such as McVeigh, necessary questions about the legitimacy of killing even an unrepentant soldier of white supremacy, his death provided... A measure of closure to the uh, mother of one of his victims has appeared at the end of a sentence, Kathleen Trenner said, whose four-year-old McVeigh killed. McVeigh, who, in his own psychotic way, thought he was saving America, never remotely killed on the scale of Kissinger, the most revered American grand strategist, strategist in the second half of the 20th century. Yale University historian Greg Grant, an author of the biography, Kissinger's Shadow, estimates that Kissinger's actions from 1969 to 76 a period of eight brief years when Kissinger made Richard Nixon's and then Gerald Ford's foreign policy as national security advisor and secretary of state meant the end of between three and four million people. That includes crimes of commission, he explained, as in Cambodia and Chile, and omission, like greenlighting Indonesia's bloodshed in East Timor, Pakistan's bloodshed in Bangladesh, and the inauguration of the American tradition of using and then abandoning the Kurds. The Cubans say there is no evil that lasts 100 years and Kissinger is making a run to prove them wrong, Grandin told Rolling Stone not long before Kissinger died. There is no doubt he'll be hailed as a geopolitical grand strategist, strategist even though he bungled most crises leading to escalation. He'll get credit for opening China, but that was de Gaulle's original idea and initiative. He'll be praised for detente, and that was a success, but he undermined his own legacy by aligning with the neocons. And of course, he'll get off scot-free from Watergate, even though his obsession with Daniel Ellsberg really drove the crime. 
No infamy will find Kissinger on a day like today. Instead, in a demonstration of why he was able to kill so many people and get away with it, the day of his passage will be a solemn one in Congress and shamefully, since Kissinger had reporters like CBS's Marvin Kalb, the New York Times' Henrik Smith wiretapped newsrooms. Kissinger, a refugee from the Nazis who became a pedigreed member in the Eastern Establishment of Nixon, hated, was a practitioner of American greatness, and so the press lionized him as the cold-blooded genius who restored America's prestige from the agony of Vietnam. Not once in the half century that followed Kissinger's departure from power did the millions of the United States killed matter for his reputation except to confirm a ruthlessness that pundits occasionally find thrilling. America, like every empire, champions is state murderers. The only time I was ever in the same room as Henry Kissinger was at a 2015 National Security Conference at West Point. He was surrounded by fawning army officers and ex-officials basking in the presence of a statesman. Seymour Hirsch, the investigative reporter who was most prominent uh, who was the most prominent exception to the fawning coverage of Kissinger, watched journalistic defer- de- uh, deference take shape as soon as Kissinger entered the White House in 1969. His social comings and goings could make or break the Washington Party, Hirsch wrote in his biography, The Price of Power. Reporters like the Times' James Reston were eager participants in what Hirsch called an implicit shakedown scheme that is access journalism, which reporters who got insider information in turn protected Kissinger by not divulging either the full consequences of his act- acts or his own connection to them. Kissinger's approach to the press was his approach to Nixon, sniveling obsequiousness. Although Kissinger could vent frustration on reporters that he never could on his own boss. Hirsch quotes H.R. Haldeman, Nixon's chief of staff, remarking that Kissinger was the hawk of hawks inside the White House, but touching glasses at a party with his liberal friends, the belligerent Kissinger would suddenly become a dove. I'm probably going to have Noah on tomorrow, and I'll probably have Spencer on too. I'm going to hit him up. Every single person who died in Vietnam between autumn 1968 and the fall of Saigon and all who died in Laos and Cambodia where Nixon and Kissinger secretly expanded the war within months of taking office as well as all who died in the aftermath like the Cambodian genocide, their destabilization set into motion, died because of Henry Kissinger. We will never know what might have been. The question Kissinger's apologists and those in the U.S. foreign policy elite, which are, you know, that's reductive. Those are the Kissinger apologists who continued on his legacy for the most part, insist upon when explaining away, uh, or, sorry, uh, elite who have stood in, or who imagine themselves standing in Kissinger's shoes, insist upon when explaining away his crimes. Kissinger materially sabotaged the only chance for an end to the war in 1968 as a hedged bet to ensure he would achieve power in Nixon's administration or Humphreys. A true tally will probably never be known of everyone who died so Kissinger could be national security advisor. Yeah, Noam Chomsky has officially outlived Henry Kissinger, which is good. A lot of history doing so. Your your reaction to his death? It's a sad day for us because he was a leader that led through challenging times. And I hope that everyone's reaction to his passing is to go learn a little bit more about him that you did. I agree. I 100% agree. Yes, everyone will forcibly learn about Henry Kissinger in the upcoming week. And that will not be a good thing because Henry Kissinger and his policies were so monstrous and so far in our rear view mirror that we can actually make honest assessments about them. Because as you know, liberals love the current war, even though they hate all the previous wars and say the previous wars were bad. They talk about all the civil rights movements of the past as a good thing that they would certainly support, just not the one that's currently happening now. But Henry Kissinger's actions are very much in the rear view mirror. So a lot of liberals who will lap up the rest of the State Department propaganda for the ongoing wars will at the very least come to the recognition that's Madeleine Albright on the left. Chatter who asked, who's that on the left? Another demon. (laughs) Didn't know before. Uh, Around your dinner table or when you're driving in the car with your kids, tell them a few Kissinger quotes that that were used at strategic times. Give them a little bit of history, because if we forget uh, what happened in the past, we're doomed to repeat it. And many times throughout history, the United States- Wait, is she being woke? Like, what's happening? I'm confused. States of America went through dark times, and leaders like Kissinger stood up, and they took action, and they provided leadership when we needed it the most. Yeah. Anyway, before we get back to the article, here is Mao being surprised at the height of Henry Kissinger's wife. Like, look at the size of your wife, dear God. Once in the White House, Nixon and Kissinger found themselves without leverage to produce a uh, peace accord with Hanoi. In the hopes of manufacturing one, they came up with a madman theory. This is... Oh... 
Oh, everything, everything is so bad. This is just another sequence of demonstrable L after L after L, just demonstrable failures over and over again, as we just pursued the might is right politics in American foreign policy over and over and over and over again. Oh yeah, they, they he got a he got a Nobel Peace Prize. Yeah, of course. So did Obama. It don't mean shit. Look, you can often tell within that neutral tone that people adorn in American media and Western media in general, when someone is truly a unique monster. Look at the words of the New York Times. Look at the, the, the way that David Sanger, White House and National Security Correspondent for the New York Times, wrote about Henry Kissinger, who engineered the U.S. opening to China, negotiated its exit from Vietnam, and used cunning ambition and intellect to remake power relations at the height of the Cold War, sometimes trampling on democratic values. Dies at 100. Like, this is the most you're going to get. Like, the, the Adolf Hitler would be written about like this if he was an American. Madman theory. The idea that North Vietnam would negotiate peace after they came to believe Nixon was adventurous and bloodthirsty enough to risk anything. It's just, just a gigantic failure. In February 1969, madman theory is awesome. Because it's just America being like, we're belligerent. We'll do any. We'll nuke you. We'll, I've, we got nukes. We'll do anything you can't stop me i'll do it what a strat what a strategy incredible in february 1969 weeks after taking office and lasting through april 70 uh 1970 u.s warplanes secretly dropped 110 thousand tons of bombs on cambodia you did not miss hear what i said 110 thousand tons of bombs on Cambodia. By the summer of 1969, according to a colonel in the Joint Staff, Kissinger, who had no constitutional role in the military chain of command, was personally selecting bombing targets. Hmm. Not only was Henry carefully screening the raids, he was reading the raw intelligence, Colonel Ray B. Sitton told Hirsch, for the price of power. A second phase of bombing continued until August 1973. Now, some of you may know Seymour Hirsch, old Cy Hirsch, as the legend who uncovered the, the My Lai Massacre, or maybe you know about him because your favorite NATO-loving, radical, liberal YouTube Andy told you that he's actually a loser and you shouldn't trust his word at all. Who's to say uh, who has more influence in this circumstance? A man dedicated his entire life to uncovering the truth about American war crimes and, and doing so diligently, or a guy sitting in his liver room shitting at him but i have the power of wikipedia backing me so anyway let's continue i don't know who's to say if you remember i had a relationship and i knew mel was against some of the policies you ever talk of bill secretary of state what or bill rogers who i didn't know the secretary uh, but rogers rogers was state and and laird was secretary of defense what the f no he said if what does she know I have a feeling Henry Kissinger is about to die. 10.29 a.m. this morning. The fact that y'all have no idea what's about to happen. Respect. We are engaging in a detente. Ladies and gentlemen, the war with the barbs is over. The war with the barbs is over. Nicki Minaj back on top. In the honor of the late, great Henry Kissinger, she rode him to death. <laughs> in a debate. Hillary Clinton boasted that she's supported by Henry Kissinger, accused the war criminal who oversaw policy that led to millions of deaths. Hillary is an equal demon, just never had the same type of power as Kissinger. She would have done the same and more. I mean, she did have the same type of power as Henry Kissinger, just not the same level of control over operations. She, she did. And look what she did with all that power. <laughs> she just didn't have... <laughs> she, I mean, look at Libya. At the time, the secret bomb bombing of Cambodia was startling was a startling offense that prompted substantial political backlash when it became public. One of the articles of impeachment against Nixon prepared by the House Judiciary Committee in 1974 held that bombing Cambodia was a constitutional usurpation of Congress's war powers. Good thing it's like, fine now. You know what I mean? We can do that. But on July 30th, well, not to the same degree, I guess. The committee ended up rejecting Article 26, rejecting the Article 26 votes to 12, and it never became part of the coalescing impeachment effort that stopped Nixon's resignation. Forty years later, and likely as a consequence, U.S. presidents routinely bomb countries the U.S. is not at war with. They provide the barest minimum of disclosure that the bombs have fallen, and often not even that. When the U.S. declared wars fail, as they did in Iraq and Afghanistan, their architects and stewards blame the client militaries and the governments that they propped up. They cover their troop withdrawals with futile bombing campaigns that kill people so American statesmen can save face. Whether... He realized it or not, when President Biden in July 2021 blamed the Afghans for losing the war, uh, the Afghanistan war, the Afghan military collapsed sometimes without trying to fight, was a typical line. 
He was reaching for the Nixon slash Kissinger template. So many cringe liberals are going to ride Kissinger's dick tomorrow? No, I don't think so. I think many liberals will also talk about how Kissinger sucks. What liberal rides for the Vietnamese war? It's, a, it's an abject failure. People are going to react to Afghanistan and everything else. People are going to react to Israel-Palestine in the same way 20 years down the line. I don't think you guys understand. Oh, you, you're talking about like elderly statesmen or whatever. Yeah, those people are going to be pieces of shit about it. But if you're talking about actual liberal voters and like normal liberal people, they won't. Anyway, God damn it. This article is much longer than I thought it was going to be, uh, which is, of course, expected. I am going to continue reading it tomorrow, and I'm going to actually have uh, the person who wrote the article on tomorrow, Spencer Ackerman. Spencer Ackerman is the one who wrote the Rolling Stones article that we were uh, reading. Henry Kissinger, war criminal, beloved by America's ruling class, finally dies. <laughs> 